Hi, and welcome to the show. Subscribe at kevinmd.com slash podcast. Get CME for this episode by clicking on the CME link in the show notes. Today on the show, we have Najat Fadlala. She is a pediatric resident in Lebanon. Her Kevin MD article is titled, The Hidden Gems of Healthcare, Unlocking the Potential of Narrative Medicine. Najat, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we'll get into your article in a little bit, but first off, just briefly share your story and journey to where you are today. So uh, my name is Najat. I'm a pediatric resident in Lebanon. I'm interested in pediatric primary care and everything that has to do with developmental and behavioral pediatrics. All right. So tell us what it's like to train in pediatrics in Lebanon. What's a typical day like? Well, it's everything that has to do with the, the intensity of residency. Add to that everything that has to do with the intensity of an economic collapse going on. So you're sort of juggling between multiple things at once, but it's still manageable somehow. So we have to worry about not only just finishing your clinical hours and your duties and so on, but you also have to worry about the, your patients being able to afford coming to the clinic in the per first place, being able to find medicine when they leave home with a prescription and so on. So uh, it's, it's more intense, but it's also uh, more rewarding when you're able to make a difference. So we know that there is an economic crisis in Lebanon, but for those who aren't familiar and you don't have to get into too many details, just briefly tell us the severity of the crisis and how that is specifically affecting not only your patients, but the clinicians there as well. Yes. So the intensity of a crisis could, there could be described with one piece of information, which is that the local currency used to be $1 was 1,500 and now $1 is 100,000. So this is in a matter of four years. So the inflation is beyond uh, beyond description. Uh, this affects the people in general, my patients, the patients we see at the hospital. Not, not everyone can afford healthcare anymore. A lot of people are coming in presenting with very late symptoms, very severe symptoms, which is very hard to see. It also affects hospitals and clinicians because a lot of physicians ended up leaving the country, especially when, when the crisis was first unraveling. So this whole like sort of uh, moving of physicians abroad also affected the quality of healthcare in Lebanon, but we sort of still manage. Some people still want to stay despite the circumstances and try to give despite not being so much to take. Now tell us specifically with the children and the families that you see, tell us a story about how this economic crisis is affecting the children and families that you see. Uh, well, I can recall a patient that I saw in the outpatient department a couple of days ago, and I was, I wanted to refer them to multiple physicians because the patient had a very severe rheumatologic disease. They were struggling so much with securing the medication. They were trying to get it from abroad. And then even that they were trying to like borrow money from other people so that they could afford it. But when I was trying to make the referrals, I noticed that the referrals are going to be on different dates because the specific physicians that I want do not come on the same day. And I was telling them that, and they told me that they had to spend half of the uh, father's salary on just a trip to the hospital because they live far from Beirut. So just the impact of that sort of made me realize that, okay, I'm going to have to refer them to three physicians and then they would have to spend almost a salary and a half just getting here. Mm. And that's not even getting the medication yet. So, and this is one story of many, obviously, unfortunately. All right, let's talk about your Kevin MD article now titled The Hidden Gems of Healthcare, Unlocking the Potential of Narrative Medicine. Now, how did your article come together? So uh, the idea for the article came about when I was talking with one of my mentors and I was uh, telling him that um, I think narrative medicine should be part of any medical school mm -hmm. curriculum. And he was asking me how so, and I was saying that it's the same thing with research, the same way we teach medical students about research and research techniques, because we have this unique exposure throughout uh, medical school and the clinical setting to uh, various data that could be turned into articles. The same way we have a different type of exposure, which is exposure to sort of difficult cases to swallow. We, we have an exposure to the troughs and peaks of life. We have an exposure that no other specialty would guarantee. And this unique exposure should be also translated into some sort of publication. It doesn't have to be academic per se, but something to be shared with others and then others could benefit from. So and then, yeah, 
Cool. And then sort of after this conversation, my mentor told me, like, you should write this down. And so I did. And this is how it came together. Why is it important for you and other clinicians? Why is it important for you to share, share the stories? Well, I can talk about myself and how this affected me personally. And I think it could reflect on others as well. Sure. So what happened with me is I started writing when I started sort of my clinical years. I I didn't write before that. I have no experience in literature or uh, writing in general before that. But I started writing down the stories, just typing them in my notes on mm -hmm. my phone. And then it sort of helped me, first of all, release the stress from seeing something so intense, witnessing a patient pass away or a patient say their last goodbye or a patient on the say, a psychiatric ward, seeing them completely dissociate from reality. This was all so intense for me as a medical student. So I just used to write the stories anonymously, obviously, mm -hmm. in my notes on my phone. And then somehow along the way, I started sharing them on social media and so on. And people started responding positively to them. And what kind of things did they say? Well, some people like would send me messages that this reminded them of the time they lost someone and this sort of helped them revisit their emotions in a healthy way. And perhaps the most striking story that happened with me was a couple of years ago, I was still a third year medical student. I was on the oncology ward and I saw a patient receive his diagnosis of leukemia. Now, the patient was in his late twenties. He was a math teacher. He had the entire future ahead of him. And I remember that it was so intense because it was so intense to witness his genuine reaction to the news and how he took it so calmly. A couple of months later, I was scrolling through social media and I saw his picture that he just passed away. And I remember then I wrote something down and I just shared it. It was anonymous. However, two days later, his mother sort of found my number through a mutual friend and called me and actually thanked me for writing this, which was so heavy to handle but also so humbling that I was able to write something that resonated with someone whose experience was so personal too. So all of this sort of motivated me to keep on writing. And then the other aspect of writing that helped me out was not just being able to write and release, but also being able to build tolerance throughout my, my residency without becoming indifferent. So I was able, I'm able to tolerate seeing these intense situations, seeing, unfortunately, when patients, even young children pass away, I'm able to tolerate this without becoming indifferent to their pain. I'm still able to feel and sympathize, but I can move on in a healthy manner because of this healthy way of release that I have come to nurture. So tell us, when do you find time to write these stories? Because I could imagine as a pediatric resident, as busy as you are, you don't have a lot of time to yourself. So mm -hmm. how often do you write about patients? When do you find time to do so? So what helped me find the time was losing the writing rituals. So I always tell my friends who ask me about this, just lose the writing rituals. If you have, if you always want to write down in a journal, in a calm place and whatever, you're not going to find time to write. Realistically, what we should do is just lose these rituals and just do it in the most effective way. What worked for me was just typing them down on my phone. Whenever I get a, a couple of minutes, if I feel something so intense, I just write it down and then, and then let it out and then go on with my day. Sometimes I write during my shifts, sometimes before I go to bed. So it depends, but losing the rituals helped me sort of incorporate writing as a very natural thing that I do every day. Is there an example where one of your stories or, or your writing process has changed you as a physician after you wrote that story? Sometimes I would write a story so intense about a moment. And because this story is out and now sort of solid as a text, mm -hmm. it's, it's sort of a, a constant reminder for me to keep looking at these moments when interacting with patients. So when I would write a story, sometimes I would feel a moment, I would be in a situation where, for example, the patient receives the diagnosis, the family reacts and so on. I'd write about it. Writing about it and putting it like outside in a solid form it sort of puts pressure on me to, co to continue paying attention to these moments with the patient's interaction. So I do think that writing sort of ended up helping me continuously like pressure myself to feel in those, in those moments and just not just 
like become completely numb to what's going on, to completely dismiss what's going on. We're talking to Najat Fadlala. She's a pediatric resident in Lebanon. Her Kevin MD article is titled The Hidden Gems of Healthcare, Unlocking the Potential of Narrative Medicine. So Najat, tell us in the future, what direction do you think that you'll take your writing? So I hope to, to always write, whether I'm a, I'm a resident at the moment, later on when I'm a fellow in my future clinic, hopefully, I hope to continue writing. It would be a privilege if I could get a couple of books published related to narrative medicine. And that's, that's basically, it. it's, it's a tool for me to go through this like field that's plagued with burnout. And it's a tool for me to also keep putting healthy pressures on myself. And my final question. Tell us some of your take-home messages that you want to leave with the Kevin MD audience. So my take-home message is just lose your writing rituals, drawing rituals, lose any rituals that keep you from doing any sort of artistic expression on a daily basis. Incorporate art, whether it's writing, drawing, or whatever it is for you. Incorporate it into your daily life. You can do it as in residence. You can do it in the mo most intense situations. When you lose the rituals, it becomes like brushing your teeth. It becomes something that you can just do quickly and go on with your day. But it will be the thing that eventually, with a cumulative effect, makes the most difference in the quality of life you have. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story time and insight. And thanks again for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you.